Right, so uh, thanks for having me. And um, this is a bit of a premiere, actually, because it's something I'm trying out, and I got invited to give this talk at Agile Tour London. So I was wanting to, to sort of see how it went. I will. Fine. Yeah. So um, this came out of um, some thinking that um, arose from the earlier talk that I did at, actually at Agile Tour London last uh, year. And in, in that talk, uh, it, it was about um, complexity and wordy maps and a whole lot of other concepts. I thought, well, this is the first time I've actually done a conference talk. I'd better go off and do some research. Um, and I looked at a couple of TED videos and a couple of YouTube videos about how to do a talk. Now, I don't think I've mastered this, but it actually got me thinking because uh, one of the things that um, came out of that was when I go to meetups and I go to conferences, they're quite keen to emphasize their inclusivity and their um, code of conduct and everything else, and they want to be really accessible. And I was thinking, right, okay, but how do you make a talk really accessible? Because what I was um, noticing, this is kind of slightly me, I noticed that from my point of view, I, I had a particular learning style, which meant that if I was sitting listening to somebody rant off a PowerPoint deck for 40 minutes, I found it quite hard to take that in because I find it harder to learn by listening than I do by seeing. And, and some people obviously prefer audiobooks and some people prefer pictures. Everybody's got their own different learning style. So what I was trying to do is then in my talk accommodate different learning styles and open up a conversation about um, cognitive load and, and maybe autism and, and how people prefer to learn. So for that, um, that particular talk, I tried a little bit to edge towards different techniques that would make the talk slightly more accessible by having a contents page and uh, having a summary and some key takeaways that were obvious. And over, over time and over the last sort of several months, I've slightly refined that talk to make it slightly more accessible by not having uh, all caps and so on. But I'm quite interested in opening up the discussion around, you know, for meetups and for conferences, if we genuinely want to be inclusive and have everybody there, we need to be uh, uh, aware of different, different learning styles and particularly people on the spectrum of autism. And you know, they obviously like a lot of structure. Uh, I don't claim to be an expert, but I'm trying to just initiate that conversation a little bit more to uh, invite uh, feedback so that I can try and be as accessible as possible. So this is a, a practice that I um, started to evolve out of that particular talk as a side uh, thing, which I'm now um, talking here and have been asked to speak about an uh, Agile tour uh, which has gone virtual this year. So um, <clears throat> in, in preparation for this, I did do a little bit of research. Um, so here's, here's the background notes. And um, you know, mind maps have been around uh, for a while. Um, Tony Bazan, I think, is credited as popularizing them. And I actually used a lot of his work um, in the early 90s when I was doing my masters. Very much liked his stuff on uh, remembering content and such like. Personally, I thought, oh yeah, my maps, they're quite innovative. It just didn't really quite work for me. Uh, and, and that's just a, a signal that different things work for different people. It's not a criticism. Uh, visual facilitation obviously is caught on enormously. And this is the idea of somebody uh, goes into a meeting, uh, produces the graphics and cartoons in real time, and then you come out with a big picture on, a, on an A2 board or something that is, this is what was discussed. And that's, that's a hugely talented thing to do. Um, but I, I do wonder how many of those large boards I do see a week later that just seem to be, yeah, that was nice, that was a terrific talent, and that's really captured the meeting. But then afterwards, a week later, how do you actually use that content unless you're taking a picture of it? And you know, not everybody can draw. So this is uh, me saying, well, how do you use visual practices to kind of take in uh, what's happened in a meeting? if drawing is either not your skill, or actually the cognitive load of producing a drawing is so much that you're then not quite paying attention to what's been said. Um, there's a, a lot of stuff that I've done as well, you know, um, uh, I've dropped down to there, say Cornell Notes. This is probably the oldest one. I think this was around in the 1940s. And this was a, a note-taking format for, um, you know, writing down what was in a lecture at Cornell University, and summarizing on the left-hand side. So there's a lot of different techniques and practices out there, and I, I kind of think that personally we don't really talk about them enough, especially if you're um, presenting content in a 
in a talk like this, or if you're a trainer in particularly, um, or, or you're presenting at a conference. So I think that it's a, a kind of thing to open up a conversation of. And down at the bottom, I found a very useful app called Agenda Defender, which basically lets you type in your summary of your talk very quickly into an app and put approximate timing so it keeps you on track. So um, there's a whole lot of the different things that can support a, a talk. But what um, I'm now going to do is to take the talk that I did uh, for Pierre, I think it was about January, and for Editor Tour London to say, what did I do with that talk in order to then use this practice to visualize it a better way? And of course, there's, there's no artistic skills required here. So uh, first of all, uh, this is the talk that I did, which um, drew on a lot of existing knowledge. So it was, I suppose you may call it an advanced talk because it assumed you might know about Brexit, uh, sadly, but also you might know about Bre uh, Kinefin and Wardley Maps and a few other different things. So I did accept that trying to put that into 40 minutes and um, covering topics that um, were new was a cognitive load in its own right. So I wanted to see if I could um, structure this in a slightly more user-friendly way, which is why I was thinking about, you yeah, have a table of contents, tell people what I'm talking about, have a summary, have a little bit of structure to it. But uh, that's the, the, the gist of the talk, and that's the link to it, that then got recorded at Andrew Tour, and, um, and uh, Carado was there. So to kind of start off, you can see from this, there, there's a, a fair amount of different complex topics. So to get started, I just simply did a bit of a, a rough note to say, well, yeah, here's a bunch of topics, how might I structure this? So I wrote the topics down in the order that I talked about them. So a bit of a, a, a linear list, so the things in time order were together. It doesn't matter too much what you put down here, but this is just to kind of get me, get me thinking about how might I derive a, a structure from this? Uh, because then I grouped related topics together. Now, the interesting thing that I then learned when I started doing this talk is that the original talk that this is based off of didn't quite flow. And, the, and, and grouping them in this way of related concepts together meant, oh, actually, I should probably move that stuff around a bit, which I've now done. So in actually producing this, even this far, it caused me to then move stuff around in the original talk to therefore see that it was presenting in a more structured and logical order. A little bit of feedback there. So that was, that was the next bit, and, and uh, you'll, you'll see what happens next. So then, um, in order to group them, and then categorise these groupings. Now, some of this wasn't a complete surprise, but I did end up with six groupings. Um, I, originally, when I was planning my earlier talk, I thought, well, let's just use the typical story Greg. format of uh, introduce Greg. the topic, uh, then have the topic, then have a summary, but like a novel. You set the scene, you tell the story, and then you summarise, or even like the nine o'clock news, you introduce the headlines, Greg. and then you wind up. Greg. So that's the talk that I did, and that, that was just what I said about there's some topics that I covered. Okay. Then, then I connected them up in the order that I talked about them. And then I colour coded them to see where the logical groupings. And then I say this is the bit of which, when I then went back to the original talk, I realised that things weren't grouped logically, so I started to move stuff around. So it did help me as a speaker to put the content together in a sensible order. And then I labelled them. So as I say, um, so that's about the point that I got to now. The in, the, uh, when I did the talk originally, I wanted an introduction and a summary, but then I noticed that there was other stuff going on as well. Like, uh, you know, I learned from YouTube, articulate what the problem is, therefore you're bringing people into the talk as to why would this talk matter to them? Uh, what is the problem I'm trying to solve? So I illustrated the problem, I then proposed the solution, and then I said, here's an example of using the solution, which is a bit of, uh, uh, training from the back of the room concept. Then I had a summary, so people uh, consolidated that learning, and then I had an ongoing learning page, which was just basically books and further links. So that is then the, the six categories I ended up with. However, um, in then producing a more useful structure, I then made a linear format. So this is the six topics then stretched out left to right, 
which is why you don't necessarily need everything to start with. The idea here is to simply draw out the method by which the talk is given rather than the content. So now with this, this is the method by which the talk is given, which will be particular to every talk uh, and different, um, especially if it's a multi-day uh, training event. I then uh, expanded this out to say, well, if I was then noting down content from this particular talk, the proposed solution using the proposal itself are going to have a lot more content than the other sections, so let's make that wider. Then I turned it into a canvas, so you could put stuff into it. Then I added in, this is basically the Cornell note format from the 1940s turned on its side. So in which the key points are in one corner or here at the top rather than on the left and the contents underneath and time goes from left to right. So um, what you can see here is the order in which things were delivered with some summary points. So then this is what the talk now looks like in terms of if you were taking notes as you went along, what, what would be going on? So there's, there's two points here. One is that as a speaker, if you obviously know the format of your talk, you can give this out as a canvas to people to say, rather than taking tons and tons of notes, I've given this canvas, this is the format of the talk, you can just populate it as you wish. Um, and you know, if, if they've not done that, then then they can kind of note things down in this sort of format. But the idea here is that the key points are at the top. So you kind of consolidate what's going on in the intro. And I was thinking like, you know, in terms of Agile, what is the, 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 the iterations here? So if I was given a talk face to face in, in, a, in a hotel or somewhere, and um, after five minutes, the fire alarm went off and everybody had to leave the building, would I have delivered a thing of value in five minutes? Well, yes, they would know who I was and what the story was. So therefore, perhaps afterwards, they can then connect with me on LinkedIn, find out a bit more. So that's like almost the takeaway for the first five minutes. But here is the, the gist of the talk and, and the, the, the topics in it with um, the key points at the top and, and the structure of the, the, to the talk at the bottom. And then if you want, this is where the sort of um, mind map element then comes in. Because mind maps are useful, but they're quite tree structure. You put the thing in the middle, and then a whole lot of trees come out and originate from the centre. And the thing that I always had a little bit of a problem with mind maps is not all knowledge is a tree. So here I'm just saying, look, you know, things as the speaker talks about them will perhaps connect up in different ways that aren't always confined by that tree structure. So with this, you're free to make the connections that make sense for you to connect up the dots and have that learning in a way. So you can see that template and tactics for users of Knefin connect together in that section. But the, uh, the, there's also a, a horizontal connection. And also the stuff about word mapping is a common thread that leaps from the introduction that I talk about it and also into the strategy cycle, which is the theory. And then I don't necessarily reference Wardley and the using, but then a recap and touch on it again. So this is basically the content of the talk with some useful lines connected up to help you learn. And I keep thinking that people learn and remember things by connections. So this is basically visualizing the connections of the talk. So if you were then to um, uh, go back to this talk, um, you, you can then say, well, what are the key points? What are the key takeaways? And also, have I understood this? This is why there's a tick. So if you go, well, oh, that, I often see this with, with uh, quite complex talks, and I won't name names, but people will go, well, that was a really good talk, uh, but I need to watch it two or three times just to get the flavour of it. Well, this kind of allows you to just tick. Yeah, I kind of got that bit. So if I wanted to recap, I would maybe just go to uh, some of the bits I didn't quite understand. So it indicates learning and, and particularly useful if you were then um, um, you know, a student and you were looking at a conference talk or a lecture, you might then use this canvas format to say, this is the bit that I've got, this is the bit I'm not sure about, and, and this is then the bit that I need to remember. So again, it's, this isn't completely brand new. It, it's, a, it's a visual format that has a, a nod to uh, mind maps, which are useful, but also way back to the Cornell Notes, which has been around for a long time, in a more visual format that is a little bit like, um, it's not really a Kanban board, but Kanban tools would support this type of annotation. So 
that's a sort of template to kind of take away uh, for this type of a talk that as a speaker you can give out and say make your notes in this format see how it works um, but but in terms of actually then using this if a drop off now hopefully this isn't going to mess things up too much but if I now go back to the um, the other talk that I did you can see how I uh, how I used it I am um, to share this one so can you see that okay so, yes we can uh, so this is the original talk that i did um last october so i won't i won't bore you with the whole talk again but now what i've done is i've then incorporated those color schemes from the 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 canvas into the talk so it's now giving even more structure to the talk it's giving visual color coded cues so this amber color lines up with the start and I'm now incorporating within my first talk the theory of the second talk. So I can now show people, as I'm talking about complexity, how the talk is going to pan out. So I'm going to inform them, this is your usual, this is the talk, and here's the seven topics. But now I'm presenting that, that cover page in a, in a color-coded way to say, well, this is the method by which the talk will be delivered, and, and this is the structure, so that when I then go into the different sections, the colors. So I'm using the colors now in this talk to kind of remind people how they're getting on and how I'm progressing through the talk and therefore towards the end and then into the green colors and then finishing up with the dark green. Now, the reason why I'm, and, and as I go, I'm now populating the canvas with the topics. So that is then refreshing and reminding people as I go of what I've covered, what the key takeaways are. So that of course I've got the the the, the key takeaway um, slide there, which is the key is the key takeaways, there's the benefits. But now what I've done is represented that as a canvas, such that they can then go back to the canvas, and I, I fill this in as it goes. You can see ongoing is empty, and then I fill it in, so they can see from this talk what the takeaways are as you go and what the key things are. So that then by the end, they've then got the talk summarized in a visual format, all neatly color-coded, connected up, and you know, hopefully that format may work for people. The, the reason that I've color-coded stuff like this is that if you are, um, you know, the, the talks like this often appear on YouTube and other video platforms, and if you're faced with a, a video that's up to about an hour long, it's sometimes difficult to go, right, so where was that particular topic? But if I say, right, I wanted to cover the uh, strategy cycle and the proposed solution, I know that that's light blue. So all I have to do is scan in the video for light blue and then mark it in YouTube. And that way I've got a bookmark to that content. So it means that rather than having to sit through the entire video, I can quickly find the right bits in the video very quickly because the canvas then maps to the color I'm using in the, in, in the YouTube. So you can use the YouTube um, or a content slider in the video to quickly find the related content because it's marked up with the relevant color. So if I now go back to oops, the original so then, so this is the, basically the template, and as I, so as I see that, you know, it's it's just an additional tool, right? It's uh, it's not meant to be rocket science. It's not meant to throw all those other tools out the window. It's just a, a format that, for me, I felt that it was simpler than visual facilitation. It was different to um, uh, mind maps because it's a more flexible format, and it drew on existing stuff like Cornell maps. So for me, it's helped because it's allowed me to restructure the talk slightly. But I feel that there's, there's kind of two sides to this. One is that as a, somebody who gives talks, you can then use this to start off and say, fill in the how at the bottom. What is the mechanism by which this talk is delivered? Um, what is the structure? You know, where are the breaks? Where might even I put in polls bit of interactive content? So what is the mechanism as an instructor I would use? And then with that mechanism, I can then fill in the key points this is what I want the takeaway to be from each section. And then that then helps me develop out the content by putting the content into the canvas underneath. And then from that, I can then 
uh, go off and then produce the site content from that. So as, an, uh, as, a, as a speaker, it helps me to structure things and create a logical flow. But also it's a takeaway for people attending meetups to say, well, here's the canvas for this. You can now populate it with a few post-its or notes or quick notes, jot them down into the right columns and connect them up as you see fit and write up the key points for each section. And then you've got a kind of takeaway that if you didn't get everything in the first go, you can then just refer to the key points. So that's the sort of summary of this. It's still quite, still quite early days, but I'm sort of looking for feedback because what I'm trying to do here is really to say, you know, if we want to be completely inclusive, we should offer up different learning styles and different patterns and different visual formats, uh, take account of people, particularly autistic people that like a lot of structure. And also because it's color coded, it does facilitate finding stuff in videos a lot quicker, particularly when you've got the canvas key to refer to that content quickly. So um, it's just a quick talk. So um, that, that's me sort of done. Um, and I'm kind of looking for some feedback. Uh, great talk. Thank you so much. Great idea. Uh, remembers me uh, the, a book I got 10 years ago is called Beyond Bullet Points. Do you know this book? What's that book called? Beyond Bullet Points. Beyond, okay. It was also an approach, is, I guess it's through the Microsoft Press. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, and you have also uh, an Excel sheet giving you this is about how to scenarize your speech. Yeah. And it's a very good reminder. This is, uh, I, I like, the link you make this with the uh, mind maps and, and you, in a way you just centerize it. Because I have this issue when I mix it, in my talk is always talking too much, too much information. I, is, I mean, you know, mind maps certainly advanced the art a lot, but I find that, uh, you know, the, if you're particularly in a technical talk, the technical side of your brain's kind of going and then you're having to context swap to an artistic side to do something kind of artistic with a mind map and it does sort of assume that tree structure so if you develop that as you go you then go well okay now i've got like six trees coming out the middle uh, but i see that the one at the top left now connects to the one at the bottom right so a mind map is not a linear presentation whereas all this content that's online is linear so this is a more linear friendly format to say it's developed in a timeline, it's presented in a timeline. How do I take that timeline based delivery and connect it up to something visual to kind of summarize it and find the content quickly? And it's a little bit about improvements on the design. Yeah. It's me, this is me now challenging. And uh, my inspiration came for Duarte. Duarte is design studio and they're sharing a lot of good things. Um, to, to learn how to make things simpler. <clears throat> or even though, so Apple is doing this, like uh, the this, this smallest uh, font is 60. <laughs> well, yes. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's a good point. Now, um, I did sort of joke in my earlier talk, I actually also researched fonts. I mean, these are all Helvetica, which seems to be the, more, the, the, the font was one of the, the least cognitive load. Um, and Arial was the other one. So there's a lot of uh, theory into font use and size that I kind of drew on as well when I was putting this together that I mentioned. Now, now Steve Dobbs is the master of the slide in, in 60 point fonts and has got three, three words in it. But as I say, look, you know, he's a billionaire and he's got a marketing department. And so there's loads of people behind him with tons and tons of content. And he basically just has to excite people and say, you know, uh, this is the big sale. So they're all doing all the detailed work, but I'm, I'm just a one-man band and I've got to kind of cover everything. I mean, you, you give here a technical approach, which is a very good one. So if you make this in the company which you're working with, you just have to merge all 80, 80 slides into one. There will be a now some slide for the technical guys here. They will uh, love it. Uh, yeah, I've been in so many uh, presentations uh, and things, uh, you know, at corporate environments where they're slide deck driven and there's vast amounts of density and perhaps it's, it's useful to share that knowledge, but people can't take in that level of knowledge that quickly, you know, particularly if you're doing like you know, two slides a minute. Uh, there's only so much that people can take in. So as an experiment around this sort of thing, I did sort of notice that um, both myself and other people at meetups, people go, oh yeah, that was a good meetup, blah, blah, blah. But the feedback is very non-specific. 
So I'm trying to sort of, uh, I was having a conversation um, earlier today with a conference organizer. I said, how do we as speakers get more useful feedback? Because typically some people don't provide any and, and some that do, are, it's just sort of quite lightweight and it's just a, yeah, yeah, I liked it. But, but trying to shift it to say, okay, from that talk that you've just been to, what were like three or four takeaways did you find them useful? Uh, and then thinking about, you know, I've just spent nearly an hour of my time, or, or even at your conference, you know, some of the conferences are two, three days. It's a huge investment of people's time and cost. If you, at the end of three days, can't come away and remember off the top of your head at least three or four takeaways, you know, and everybody's memory is different, right? And as you get older, your memory is not so good. The uh, ability to support people being able to remember uh, and say, those are the takeaways. And even not sure, it's, yeah, that was that talk. All right, now there's a the takeaway sheet. There's a the key points. I can now go back to that and, and, and revisit why that was useful to me. I just felt like listening to somebody talk was too much of the same content in one go. That was all speaking. And there wasn't enough in the way of structure to that content, both in terms of what the talk is about and the summary, but also how the content within the talk all related to one another. And I've started to think, well, okay, so how how would I apply this to someone else's talk? And as soon as I start applying this to someone else's talk, it then immediately becomes obvious to me how structured it really is. And, and I go, oh, gee, they were all over the place. Now, that then is, is a sign when I hear people saying, yeah, that was a good talk, but I'm now going to have to watch it two, three times. That all over the place is perhaps a sign the talk could be prevented, presented in a more logical, structured, explanatory way with summarizations as you go to facilitate that, yes, this may be complicated, but here's some key points and um, this is the summary. So it kind of supports that, that kind of learning model. Okay, we have here a question from Manu, Maru Van Eyck. Sorry guys, uh, it's very loud, so I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to try to be very, very, very concise, okay? Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, since HTML came and, you know, uh, the, 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 the psychological background for associative thinking and, um, you know, mind maps are also very old, et cetera, et cetera. And um, nobody, I was always wondering why is there no equivalent to representing content? in the way the brain works with associative mm -hmm. um, thinking, so hyperlinks, et cetera, in anything we do document-wise. And it's been 30 years and I've had headaches and I just don't get it. Why do we do same dumb stuff we've been doing with PowerPoint for 40 years? Yeah. And uh, that's why I tried, I tried mind maps. I tried using Excel sheets to structure all my thinking and avoid the classical tree-based thinking that just makes the combinatorial explosion of the topics and open topics you gotta keep track of. Uh, just you know, just too 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 hard to manage for everyone who's got to listen to you for more than 15 minutes, and that's the case in my job. I yeah. have to give talks to people for between 60 to 180 minutes. So here is my um, um, from my experience. So yeah. in some of the teams I've been uh, lucky to work with, I had a mentor who have been doing something that is very similar to what you're doing. It was not a two-dimensional canvas; it was a one-dimensional, yeah. if you want. So it was a kind of a tree. It's um, the kind of evolution of the so-called pyramid principle if you guys know about it who here knows what a pyramid principle is it's the you know the mckinsey inspired style of presenting from from since the book by this instead professor king anyways um, if you don't know it you can research it but that's the kind of established okay. way of presenting stuff in strategy consulting it's called the pyramid principle but to me it's just a very pragmatic way of following this rule of thumb of not more than three subtopics for every topic and a, and a tree structure for presenting complex topics applied to PowerPoint, but it never solved the problem for complex topics or technology. For people who are not technology, it's fine. And also when you get a talk for a very long time, so you always, at some point, you always lost people, depending on the audience, but you always yeah. lost people. So I really love this way of presenting this stuff because it's a concept map. That's what we call an ontology work. It's a semantic yeah. concept map, very simple, with just one kind of dependency, which is sequence in terms of logical flow of what you're trying to get at and yeah. then some kind of milestones where you make a stop and you make a drive a conclusion or a takeaway or something so it's a mm -hmm. very simple way however when you listen to content presented this way it is very tough for the brain to follow because the brain thinks associatively so what i 
would try to do with what you just showed. I'm gonna, I'm gonna steal it from you. I'm gonna refer to you. Yeah, no, by all means. I mean, I wanted, I wanted to get out there and whatever else. Uh, and yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's yeah, about yeah. association. So this is quite flexible yeah. in connecting what you think is important. Now you can, obviously, if you wanted to, use diagrams here. I've just, I've just filled it in with words. But if, if pictures do help you, there's nothing to stop you using a picture. No, what I meant was um, I was going to borrow this method of yours, and I think these um, these uh -huh. summary uh -huh. slides, like this one, number sixteen, um, I would just put them as summary between well, every. Uh, Maro, Maro, can you just speak slowly? Uh, just slow down the debit. I got it. He <laughs> just said he was going to borrow. I think slide sixteen. I think. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, in a slower fashion, and that's my last word. Um, I was going to borrow slide 16 and do an experiment with it in my next presentation and use it as a start slide and end slide for every chapter of my presentation. Even if my chapter is just one slide long, I'm going to use it and see how people think, what people yeah. think of it, and see if it helps them understand where we are in the big map of things. That's yeah, all. Could, Thanks a lot. What, what you really saw in the, in the talk that I gave is how I filled this in as I went in the talk to kind of refresh people and fill it in as I went. So you can use this as you go. Um, but I, th I think that having, the, 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 you know, you've got the template to show people the structure. You can just give them them that at the end if you want, or you can do what I did in the other talk and fill it in, in as you go. But I'm, I'm also thinking it's like, you know, I mean, this is just for a 40 minute talk. There'll be a different type of template for, you know, a training course. You might have a template for, each session of, of a couple of hours, or you may have one for the whole day. And obviously for a training course over two or three days, there might be another format altogether. But it is quite scalable, because basically you've just got summary and content on a page. Yeah, that's my point. That's exactly the way I used to summarize the whole semester content of um, content for AI, let's say, or um, 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 knowledge and reason representation. So very technical stuff, but with the use of this kind of structured mind maps, it was much easier. Okay, so I've, I've seen some more notes about the pyramid principle. I'll go off and look that up later. Um, is there any other questions, Pierre? I think no, currently not, no, no, no questions. I think it's uh, very clear for me and, and uh, was clearly presented. Thank you. Good. Benjamin? Yeah, I, I'm materializing from the mist. <laughs> yeah. I, I might get cut off because my internet's a bit un, uh, dodgy at the moment and. Uh, my IT support people wipe my laptop, so it's synchronizing uh, hundreds of gigabytes or whatever. Um, uh, Craig, I just wanted to, <clears throat> uh, I love all this, um, and I think it's really useful and really practical, and I'm using Rome Research um, to connect my ideas in the kind of, um, uh, I, I never know which connection, you know, to, to do that linking of all the different elements of the ideas, and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking now about how to pull that out and put it into this kind of format to give a nice, linear grokable presentation um, when I was at PwC the, the the corny thing we always used to say was what do you want people to see to, to, to know think feel and do as a result of the presentation yeah. I wonder if you can talk to how this translates into impact how you think about uh, this is a great way of telling a story yeah. but how do you think about the impact that that story is going to have kind of thing well yeah I mean you're right I suppose you could put that into the key points even or or even in the if, uh, if I uh, bring that up so in the you could have a, a section. Of, I mean, obviously, the, the, the colors and the, the, the format of this at the bottom is entirely up to the person really structuring the talk. And, and people going to the talk might use a different structure. But in the end one, you could summarize the, those categories that you mentioned and just put it there as pointers. So yep. what, was the, what was the thing? The no. What do you want people to, to, to uh, know, think, feel, and do as a result? Uh, was the was the tag <clears throat> okay? Well, you can, you can uh, maybe add a streamline about Im impact. Yeah, yeah. So when I did this, um, I mean, this is the original talk. It's like the um, yeah. I suppose what I've done here is just summarise the talk. But as, I guess that as an action, I could say right. What I'd like you to do is, is to see, to take this out, try it in your own context, see if it works, give me feedback, right? Um, mm. And yep. maybe not in a position to tell people how they should feel, but rather than ask them how they feel and how did that go for you. Uh, I do believe this is very interesting also to structuring your mind. When you, when you make a talk, you have a lot of ideas. You can put all the ideas there and then you can start sorting. 
Yeah, you can start moving stuff around. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this is just PowerPoint and simple, but I guess there's better tools for it. But say it's also, I mean, if you could even use Trello, it's not obviously a Kanban, but something like Trello would facilitate just putting content in, in this way. Oh, or, or the Prezi. Mm -hmm. You know the Prezi tool. So it's also like a process. You can uh, centerize it. Or drum research, okay. Look that up as well. Bettina, any feedback? Any thoughts? Uh, no, I appreciated listening, and uh, it will help me to structure my thoughts. <laughs> That's uh, something, you know, I need. So thanks a lot. Yeah. Uh, the, the reason I, I put it like this is that, um, you know, if you were coming into a diagram like this, probably the key points is the thing that you are going to look at first to say, well, what are the key takeaways? A bit like reading the contents in a book then I dive down into the, the subject matter that comprises this. But the reason that the how is at the bottom is that that's not really part of the learning. So I didn't want to detract away from that. That's more just for the, um, uh, that, that's the how the talk is delivered. So that's why it's kind of structured like that, because from a point of view of revising the talk. Yeah, hi, I have uh, maybe as a question that uh, um, goes into the direction of uh, what Pierre was just saying. So I think this is a great way if you have like a, a your talk is very good structured and you really have just the idea of following your um, your uh, guideline. But mm -hmm. uh, do you leave a kind of space for, for interaction or space for for uh, spontaneous excerpts in a way because it doesn't fit into this kind of ah uh, yes well you see so in this template uh, uh, what I've obviously noticed is that when things go more online it's not just I'm sitting here talking to a slide deck the whole time as if I was in a room. Uh, you're in a room, if you're doing a traditional conference talk at a conference, there isn't a huge amount of interactivity. And, and also it kind of spoils the video as well, um, because that's just the way that that works for that format. But with things being more online, uh, what I've done with my talk is introduce more interactivity. So in one version I did like three or four polls, and then I'm getting feedback, I'm getting useful information, I can then use that data to then develop the talk further. But if you're doing something like that, that having a poll, that then goes into the how. So what I would put into the how, uh, I mean, again, this is just the structure for a 40 minute talk. If you've got a whole day, you'd be putting, when is the break? You know, when are the interactive sessions? Uh, and all of that, how, uh, the mechanism of how the talk is delivered. I mean, when I was uh, doing training for Lloyd's, we would have a, a trainer's notes and this is what goes into the sort of trainer's notes in terms of, you know, this is where the interactive sessions are. Uh, these are the key points you need to make. Here's the sort of break times. So again, for, for something like that, that, that's more involved and complicated, you would probably put that into the how to give you a flavor for, well, are the breaks roughly evenly spaced? Or if it's an online interactive talk, are, are the polls roughly evenly spaced? Because if you're talking for an hour, you might not want all the polls together. You might want them approximately 15, 20 minute uh, intervals. So again, it's providing that backbone around which the content hangs. Maybe you can make this interaction between the colors before switching from one color to another color. Yeah, yeah, yeah or, or even just like a line or something like that. You know, there's lots of different mm -hmm. ways, but I'll just like put it out there for a bit of feedback and inviting comment so that, um, you know, I kind of evolve this a little bit. It can be a cliffhanger for the next phase. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Shine. Um, thank yeah, you. thank you. Thank you, yeah. Craig, Okay, for sharing something that I'm struggling with or, you know, uh, doing a couple of early pilot classes. My quick learning was, what are we doing today? Or what's the agenda? Or what's the overview? Mm -hmm. uh, so I think very relevant to, to uh, my world at the moment. And yeah, so thank you for sharing. Thanks. And, and these sorts of things like I was doing before the agenda, it's often just a list and, and, and sometimes making that list a bit more colourful and, uh, you know, interesting uh, takes away from being a, just a list of things as important as that is. Uh, trying to present it in a more colourful and interesting way also catches people's attention and, and you can fill it in as you go. Good one. Thomas? Yeah, I'm constantly thinking about uh, that I experience a lot of people who try to structure a talk along a tree view 
Mm. I'm just making up my mind if that uh, is a general mistake. I'm not sure yet, but uh, I really like the thought that the, the talk must always be uh, uh, in a, uh, done in a linear manner and that uh, color coding certainly helps in, in this area. Mm. That is what I'm just every talk, Every talk is going to be specific talking. to that talk, but... And it may be that, um, you know, depending on the content, it is done in a different way. But the thing is that when it becomes a video like this, it is a linear event. So then relating that linear event back to the learning, kind of, the, the, this seems quite a friendly format to do it, as opposed yeah. to um, a mind map, which isn't really a linear format. Exactly. That was that was what I, I was thinking, and yeah. that's uh, making something more more obvious for me. So thanks a lot. Okay. Yeah, thank well, you. Um, and again, I think it's an important conversation to have around, you know, cognitive load, um, autism, people with disabilities, different learning styles, just to open up that conversation so we can start exploring some different things, different practices, and get feedback and advance things to, to be more inclusive. Mm -hmm. Very well. Thanks, uh, uh, thanks as well, uh, and uh, I'm also uh, thinking this uh, should be quite helpful in uh, in some of the work I'm involved in. Um, what I'm still uh, right now just uh, what's going through my mind is I fully get how this helps in the linear um, uh, uh, presentation mode. I'm still uh, wanting to get my head around. Couldn't that also help me uh, if you know I'm in a situation where a linear presentation is not quite what I'm finding actually useful or practical but it's rather a conversation and i want to be well prepared to be able to dive in right away right uh and so this could be a different kind of like you know almost like a thumbnail uh, view yeah. of 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 the content i have and um, there it might nevertheless even though this is hugely useful to help an abstraction right that is still rockable so to speak up to a certain mm -hmm. uh, level of content I was wondering whether maybe, you know, with some templates, with even some, I don't know, programmatic uh, kind of way of helping, um, it, it would be possible to even ease that situation. i give you an example. Uh, that's actually where I felt mind maps, particularly when they support this collapse and expand, can be hugely useful, mm -hmm. right? Not to overwhelm somebody on the first glance and then be able to show more detail. Or if you have... Uh, if you happen to uh, prefer spreadsheets, right, when they have this outline uh, collapse, uh, what is it, yeah, group, yeah. ungroup kind of feature, similar thing, right? So if we were able to mix something like that mechanism mm -hmm. with this, it might take the power of this even much further. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a good point. Now, what I've done here is the key points. So typically that talk that's summarized here is 40 minutes. But if somebody said, okay, um, can you just summarize your talk in five minutes for me and do that outline view? I'll just go, right, there's the key points. I've got about 10 there. I'll just spend a minute or two explaining each one, and that's my lightning talk. So therefore, I don't have to talk about everything that's on the page. I can just pick the key points, or if it's a 20-minute talk, I can just pick the key points and a couple of the supporting points. So I suppose it's flexible. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's using it in a different way, because here what I've done is I, I explain everything that's in the talk. But what I could do is prioritize that and just pick the, the bits out of it that's relevant and say, well, if you're interested in learning more, all I've done here is pick some key points in the full talks um, and there's the link. Makes sense. Yep, thanks. So you can use it for next week? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> because next week Wolfgang is speaking. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, well, that's, a, that's the thing. You can take this format, use it for the next talk, and then say, by the way, here we go. <laughs> Try so, and everyone in the audience, this is a space you can come to talk. Mm. That's cool. Yeah, well, this is the, a, a good point, Pierre, because with, with all these online meetings, there's been an, an explosion in video content <laughs> because a lot of the meetings were face-to-face -face and they weren't always recorded. But uh, there was a meetup I was involved with in Scotland that was monthly because there was a lot of logistics and getting venues and sponsors. It's now gone to weekly. So it's now generating four hours of video a month. And so are so many other meetups. So with this explosion in online content, because it's all gone online, some way of trying to structure the talks and getting the content out of it quickly, especially using color coding to find relevant sections quickly, mm -hmm. I thought was quite a useful thing. 
It is, it is. So I, I'm very thankful and mm -hmm. still asking the, the audience for the last questions. Well, again, I think, I th thank you very much for this uh, great uh, uh, inspiration. And uh, well, my last thoughts is I really would love to combine this with, let's say, some more, maybe more metaphors or more mm -hmm. symbols or more, let's say, a little bit more uh, organic uh, uh, picture stuff. Like yeah. When I, yeah, obviously free to do I that. Thought, so it'd be interesting to see what people come up with and then I yeah. could start maybe sharing the content if you were okay with that. Here's some examples. Yeah, but great, great inspiration. Thank you. So, I, I love to see very good speakers. So thank you so much. Because if I think about how I'm speaking, I'm too wild. It's going everywhere. So it's that's lovely when it, when we have very very rigid, like Wolfgang, very very strict, and Marcos absolutely strict. <laughs> all of hyper professional. <laughs> yes, yes, you all of. And me crazy. Oh, that's cool. That's excellent. I love it. So thank you so much. Okay. Well, thanks then. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And, uh, sorry it's a for pleasure. The and uh, and uh, great for, for the feedback. I will Thank you, Craig. Thank you, Craig. Thank you, Craig. Great. Thank you, Craig. Thank you, Craig. Thank you guys. Thank Take you. care. Thanks Stay so safe. Bye-bye.